Hello, I'm here to talk to you about my Nautic Star 1910 Bay Boat and how I've chosen to set it up for my style of fishing that includes freshwater lakes, tidal rivers, and also inshore. So I'm going to first start with the power plant that I've chosen to power uh, my vessel. This is a Mercury 150 horsepower Optimax. This is a two-stroke motor, so there's no oil changes required. There is a reservoir full of oil that you do have to fill, and the direct injection that this motor does incorporates the right ratio into the cylinder head. And a very important component for any motor that you choose to use is the prop selection. I've chosen here to go with a Mercury Marine Tempest Plus 19 pitch prop for this boat in stainless steel. The advantage is that it doesn't flex, it stays sharp, powers the boat very well. The disadvantage is that if you do run into something, it's going to cost you. What I've chosen to do is mount my motor onto a manual jack plate. Manual means that you set it once with a wrench and it stays fixed at that location. What this does essentially is it sets the motor back six inches which makes the boat seem a little bit longer, gets the prop into a little cleaner water. Also, it allows me to mount the motor higher than the gunnel is here. So you can see this motor is elevated a little bit to ensure I get maximum efficiency from my um, motor and prop setup. Also, this jack plate allows me to mount my transducer for my fish finder. And also, this is a power pole, a shallow water anchor system that I can directly mount to the jack plate which eliminates me putting any more holes in the hull of the boat. One of the most frequent questions that I get asked when I'm at the launch recovering the boat is, what is this large black pole that I have sticking out on the back of my boat? What this is, it's called a power pole. What it essentially is, is a shallow water anchor system. I'm able through a wireless remote to simply hit a button that then will deploy this so that in shallow water, I don't have to drop an anchor with rope. This simply deploys, just as you see it here. Sticks in the mud, the sand, the rocks, whatever bottom I happen to be in, as long as it's 10 feet of water or less. I then can stay there for a period of time, fish it. When I feel I need to leave, I simply hit another button, brings it back up, stores it, and then I'm able to move on to my next location. So this is called a power pole. This is the blade series and it's simply a shallow water anchor system. Two things I do for trailer rigging is I make sure that I have a bar to support my motor when I'm traveling down the highway. Also, I highly recommend, these are called boat buckles. I have the stainless steel version because I do go into salt water. You simply pull these out, hitch it to the boat, and through a ratchet system, ratchet it right down. When you went to release, there's a nice release button and they retract immediately. So I'm gonna start in the aft portion of the boat. Back here on both sides, we have stowaway seats, which are excellent. Also, there's storage available underneath. This is where I keep my cranking battery and also the oil reservoir for my two-stroke Mercury Optimax motor. So that's what's there. Nice, easy, stores flat. Nice, no skid deck. There's also a little grab bar uh, for the passengers that do decide to sit there. There's a replicating one on this other side. In the center here, it's approximately a 20 gallon uh, live well here, uh, which makes it great in the back of the boat uh, for baiting up or keeping bait uh, certainly located here. And it simply closes right up, folds right over, and again, no skid uh, surface, which makes it excellent for being back here. You can see here from the helm, the center console, have the stainless steel wheel with the throttle. I also have my switches here for my nav lights, my bilge, and my aerators and various accessories. In front, I have the RPM gauge, miles per hour, water pressure, fuel, and voltage. All important things to be keeping an eye on while you're out on the water. Mounted here is a nice dry box with a nice hinge that comes out. Inside, I have a marine radio with USB uh, and aux imports here, uh, located right on the inside. Directly above this, I have my 1198 Hummingbird Fish Finder and my compass for a backup. When you're going out in the water, you always want to have redundancies whenever possible. So while I do have the Fish Finder and uh, have never had a failure with it, uh, I do have the backup compass if I am going out. On top here, uh, so I'm, if I'm fishing alone, I'm able to take pictures. 
in addition to the many features I have located on top, also a below the center console, which a lot of people use for storage, I have a radio here to call out if I ever am in distress. What I choose to fill mine with, which we're going to see in a moment, is three batteries. Three large deep cycle batteries for my trolling motor and also a four bank charger. So I'm able to charge not only the three batteries, but also my cranking battery. On the side, on both sides, you'll see a cup holder with three rod holders. It's reciprocated also on the other side. As I work my way to the front of the boat, I want you to see that I've installed this ruler and I mounted on the side of the boat makes it very easy for me to determine how big the fish is and then release it back into the water. What you see here is the front of the boat and what I'm sitting on is a nice large cushion chair with cushioned back. This also has a grab bar in the front but doubles as a live well. A nice oval shaped live well in the front here. Okay what you're looking at here is the front deck where you spend a lot of the time you're fishing especially for fresh water. It offers three excellent storage components all that drain over the sides. You can see there's a side one here, a large center one here, and a replicating one just like this on the port side. In addition, in the front, there is a storage locker for your anchor. So this comes with an anchor, a storage locker for your anchor, beautiful area to store it, quick, easy, and efficient. You can see at the front, I also choose to put on a 1197 Hummingbird here with side imaging. My trolling motor, which is a Minn Kota Riptide, 101 pounds of thrust and 36 volt. Those three batteries that we saw earlier, what power this? It allows me to run all day and easily move a boat of this size. Some of the key features that I like about the troll motor is the wireless remote that comes with it. This allows me to control the direction, the speed, but what I like most about this is that there's a little anchor. What this is, is called spot lock. This is a Minn Kota trolling motor and they have something they call spot lock. What this trolling motor has in the head region is a GPS. When I hit this button, it remembers the GPS coordinates that I hit that button at, and it does not allow that trolling motor to move within five feet from that location. What's great is that if there's wind, like we're experiencing right now, it holds me to that location. If there's tide, current, it does whatever it needs to with direction and speed of the motor to hold the boat there. I use this if I'm in 10 feet of water or greater. If I'm in 10 feet of water or less, that power pole we saw earlier is what I choose to use. A few last things in the front here I want to point out is I have this mounted to a ram mount. That allows me, based on sun, to move this in any direction that I feel necessary so I can still see it without having additional sun glare. I also have a GPS puck mounted up front with the that goes to this unit, but I have this unit linked to the one that we saw before, the cable, so I can share waypoints in between the two units. My trolling motor also has a side imaging transducer, which this is capable of, so I'm able to look at side imaging at both the center console one, which has a transducer below the main motor, and also the trolling motor.